Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another original live global transmission. We'll be here for the next two hours. It is Sunday, the 27th day of September 2015. I am your host, Alex Jones. David Knight and Jakari Jackson are both in Philadelphia, where a foreign leader of state, a religious leader, is calling for open borders and engage in domestic political operations inside the United States. We're told we have separation of church and state in this country. That's been twisted to where the government controls and, and issues licenses to religion, to churches, and turns them into charitable organizations and then tells them that they can't have any views, whether it's abortion, open borders, gun control, you name it, if those ideas are conservative or libertarian. But if you are the Marxist Pope Francis and a foreign head of state, you can come here as a sovereign and pontificate endlessly uh, to the public manipulating our internal politics. And universally, from Fox News to CNN, we're told there can be no criticism of Francis and that he's not being political. That's the talking point. He's not being political. He's not being political. He just wants carbon taxes and world government and open borders uh, and higher taxes on the middle class. He's not being political. He's not being political. Did we tell you he's not being political? Let me tell you one more time. He's not being political. So David Knight and Jakari Jackson with their final report uh, from the road covering the Pope and his entire U.S. Uh, whirlwind tour of the East Coast, D.C., New York, and now Pennsylvania. We're going to be breaking that down. And then to really look at political persecution in this country, I was thinking about it the last few days and I think I'm going to make a mini documentary on the subject and then investigate some of the people in these different federal agencies and really burrow into their activities and call for congressional investigations of them, like we've done Lois Lerner and others, like we called for the downing of Boehner, spearheaded that operation. We're very proud of it with uh, Congressman Jones and others. You see how that went. I thought that we should uh, look at some of the political persecution with Joe Bannister, former Treasury agent, who went public exposing with the IRS as a fraud they indicted him repeatedly uh, for his free speech. And speaking of free speech, the UN releases plan to push for worldwide internet censorship. They plan to have the SEC and FTC here in America in free speech. We'll be breaking that report down. This is from Breitbart. The UN wants to censor the entire internet to save feminist feelings. And they actually say in congressional and UN committee hearings that cyber violence is translated towards women being criticized in any way on the internet. And this is the new cultural Marxism going on at university. I was talking to a liberal that I've known since college who was going back to college. He's a Hollywood film editor, but he got tired of that. And so he, he wants to get a, I guess a doctorate and then a PhD in psychology. And he was telling me about UT and just how He's like, no, no, liberalism, as we hear all points of view, and they're like, no, we bring down the patriarchy and white males. They are evil. You are a white male. You are inherently evil. Well, no, that's that sounds like racism to me. Oh, really? We'll just have the dean put you on academic suspension, academic, um, academic probation. This is what America is, totalitarianism wrapped in political correctness. There's nothing politically correct or liberal about it. It is classical, tyrannical, mafia takeover. And speaking of censorship, in England, if you try to do a radio show, TV show, or blog criticizing radical Islam, you get arrested. Same thing in Germany. Anti-ISIS artwork banned from free speech event after outcry from London police. And what is the artwork? You ever go to like Michael's or Hobby Lobby? It's those little animals, little raccoons, little rabbits. They put some of them in black uniforms with an Al-Qaeda flag, and that's just not allowed. So they were shut down. You're not allowed to have that. You're not allowed to have that. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, and thank you so much for joining us on this 27th day of September 2015. I'm your host, Alex Jones. David Knight and Jakari Jackson will be joining us at the bottom of the hour as they cover Pope Francis's historic political operation here in America to open the borders and bring in global government and sell a carbon tax and more. He's also anti-gun, even though he's protected by men with guns. 
Uh, that is coming up. And then, of course, we are going to have former Treasury agent who blew the whistle on the fact that the Federal Reserve is a private run-for-profit uh, organization and the Treasury Department's fully aware of that. He's going to be joining us to talk about political persecution in this country, which has admittedly reached all-time highs with Lois Lerner and the IRS and the internal memos coming out that they were told to target more than 10,000 conservative, Christian, libertarian, veteran, and gun groups. And they haven't gotten in trouble for the incredible criminal activities that dwarf thousands of times what Richard Nixon did. Richard had 120-something names, Nixon did, that he didn't even act on in a safe with their IRS records. And that was criminal. He should have stepped down for it. They openly engage in mass criminal operations. They give out tens of thousands of tax exemptions to liberal, socialist, and communist groups, and in the last five years have given out one tax exemption to a conservative group. That's the way to shut down political speech. Then you have Pope Francis come in, endorse Obama, call for open borders, call for carbon taxes, call for global government, call for everything else you can imagine, completely political. Where's the IRS being sicked on the Catholic Church for that activity? But again, that's a fraud within a fraud because Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or the press or the people's right to peacefully assemble for redress of grievances. That's the First Amendment. Congress has no jurisdiction. It's just come in and taken over the churches and bullied them if they are not socialist, if they're not communist. But if they are, then Reverend Wright can get up there tax exempt and say, GD America, GD the police, GD free market, G, you know, down with America. All, oh, that's, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, here's how it works. I've got my free speech if I was a church, and Wright's got his free speech. That's how that works. See, because Congress has no jurisdiction. But instead, they just continued their jurisdiction. They just expanded it to engage in this giant power grab. And we have huge attacks on free speech uh, that are simply incredible on the Internet. You name it being announced. Uh, but first, I want to get to Hillary Clinton. She spent years blocking the release of her servers. Then she said they all got erased, just like Lois Lerner said. It turned out, of course, they'd ordered them erased, but there were backups up in the cloud, and so now they found huge caches of other emails where she's talking to Petraeus about classified things. And Petraeus, over some files at his home office, had to step down and had to basically plead guilty to felonies, but then time served. And I'm not defending Petraeus, but compared to Hillary, it's like having a crooked toenail, and then Hillary is barbecuing children, and then she doesn't get in trouble. I mean, it is totally two different worlds, and now she just can't explain why she has these other emails that she says she didn't have, and then she shoots her mouth off and says it's a conspiracy theory. I'm convinced that if robbers were walking out of your house with your jewels, your computers, uh, your artwork, whatever, and if they just said to the average trendy, you said, hey, quit robbing my house. Oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. Well, wait, you've got a television set in your hands, a computer in your hands. You're putting them in a van. You've got mask on. It's 2 a.m. They just go, conspiracy theory. You go, whoa, you're right. It's all yours. You're absolutely correct. I mean, that's the game they play. But it was the Clintons we learned from their Clinton library uh, lawsuits with uh, Joseph Farah and World Net Daily. There they were in 93 when they first get in going, we've got to shut down the new growing press. The Internet's going to allow a new independent press before Drudge even existed. We've got to shut down things like the Western Journalism Center and Joseph Farah. And we've got to instruct all our operatives in the media when anyone challenges anything we say called a conspiracy theory. Hey, everybody else wasn't making money in cattle futures. You invested a thousand and got hundreds of thousands. Hey, all the people that work for you are getting killed. Hey, there's all these. Shut up, conspiracy theorist. Hey, you gave missile secrets to communist China. It's all admitted. Conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory. So this is what they engage in. You've got Hillary taking hundreds of millions of dollars from foreign governmental leaders, totally illegal, to her foundation while she's the head of the State Department, and then she removes the import-export ban on U.S. weapons to those countries. I mean, 
open and shut giant mega massive felonies in front of everyone and nothing's being done. <sighs> no, instead, they have the FBI and others investigating every Tea Party group, every conservative group, every libertarian group, putting Dinesh D'Souza in prison, going after thousands of Christian groups. It is a reign of Hitlerian terror. But the Democratic Party in this country gets off on the criminal behavior. They, they're thugs now. They're an organized crime syndicate. And the average minion likes it, even as their unemployment goes up, even as they lose their jobs, even as they're sold out, doubling black unemployment. Love it because it, they feel like they're part of the winning team. Clinton can't explain discrepancy from newly discovered email exchange with Petraeus, this is Meet the Press, here talking to one of her own former operatives that's interviewing her, and she tells him it's a conspiracy theory. Here's the first clip. Uh, you had said uh, in a written statement under oath that you had turned over everything that you believed you had for the federal records mm -hmm. with, um, with those 55,000 emails, but we've now discovered an email chain between uh, then General Petraeus and yourself that took place a couple of months before um, these records started. Can you explain the discrepancy there? Because it was the same email address that you used while at state that you were using with General Petraeus just two months before you had said everything was out there. Well, everything that we had access to was certainly out there. And the reason we know about the email chain with General Petraeus is because it was on a government server. And so from my perspective, um, we have a very thorough review process that we conducted. And my attorneys supervised it. They went through everything. And what we had available at the time was turned over. But I guess what I'm trying to figure out is if you'd said in March that, uh, that the email system began in March of 09, and yet we have the same email address popping up in January, what, what, explain that discrepancy. There was a transition period. You know, I wasn't that focused on my email account, to uh, be clear Let me here. Stop you there. Yeah. Because uh, you oh, that's enough. Focused on it, right. except Her body language is just total thug mafia scum. Lisa Jackson at the EPA had another secret email and pen names as well, known to plumes. And she had to step down because it's criminal. Okay, I want criminal charges against these people. It's so obvious. Now let's go ahead and go to the next clip where she calls the conspiracy theory uh, that she ever did anything wrong. Here it is. Hundred because they were clearly personal and not work related. Can you respond to an alternative explanation that has uh, sort of... Another related? conspiracy well, theory? Uh, let me, let me, oh, yeah, questioning an online. Perhaps the reason you wanted to have a private server and not a government server is that Republicans have been coming after you for years. Mm -hmm. uh, you might have, may have been running for president in the future, and you wanted to make it a little more difficult for congressional investigators to subpoena your government emails and a little more difficult for freedom of information really? requests. Is that is that That's, a that, fair theory or not? It's totally... Uh, ridiculous. Oh, yeah. um, that never crossed my mind. And in fact, since more than 90% of my work-related emails were on the system, um, they are subject to FOIA oh, or enough. any other request. That's how the, the... So she didn't have a private email with secret stuff on it to hide it from anybody. Of course not. Oh, no. Never. Didn't have a second set of books. Ha <laughs> ha. She just sits there and shakes her head. This is the person that ran Benghazi. This is the person involved in Fast and Furious directing so much of it. This is the person uh, involved in so many criminal activities. And she just sits there because she's a woman and is wearing a pink dress. She's allowed to commit crimes. Just like Obama is part black, so supposedly everyone must bow down and let him arrest members of the press, persecute whistleblowers at a level never before seen, and engage in all sorts of insider trading and crimes. It's all okay because they're the good politically correct people. And the Republicans are blackmailed, so they just lay down to it all. If you want to know why the establishment hates us, it's that Infowars.com, the radio show, the nightly news, our entire media operation, the films we produce, the social media, reaches hundreds of millions of people conservatively every year. Just our reach on social media, according to Google Analytics, is 1.6 billion every month. That's people that see our material, see our links. It doesn't mean they necessarily click on it. Conservatively, it's in the hundreds of millions that actually read it, look at it, see it. And we're able to take stories that sound completely outlandish, that have no believability, take the evidence, hammer it, 
and get serious people to investigate it and look at it. And five years, four and a half years after.